I really admire your generation for starting the tradition of picking your pronouns. And for the record, mine are he, him. But military vets of my generation deserve credit for some customs and slang that definitely made the world safer for members of sexual minorities like me. I'll start with um, a racy topic, tight pants. The combat uniform was called fatigues, consisted of pants and a shirt with the shirt tucked in. When you bought the pants, they were quite loose around the thighs and butt. My roommate asked me if I was going to get mine tailored. He said it would give me a sharper, more military appearance. I told him, I don't see the point of it, really, since it's just us guys around here at Fort Benning, and who cares? Then I started noticing all these guys with fatigues that were kind of snug across the butt, the thigh, and the crotch. Oh, well, <laughs> it was off to the tailor for me just to fit in and present a more military appearance, you know. I first heard the phrase military bearing in Vietnam. When I arrived there, I didn't have an assignment and through an old friend of mine, I was able to get a, a job. I was able to interview for a job, um, briefing the generals, good job. He predicted I would get the job because number one, I had gone to fancy schools and number two, I had something that he called military bearing. Oh. I had not heard of that previously, <laughs> but I soon figured out that it meant tall, slender, and somewhat easy on the eyes. I heard senior officers using it quite a bit when discussing certain junior officers. And yeah, I got the job. Now, Getting back to tight pants, there weren't any in Vietnam. That was because of the climate. Uh, jungle fatigue pants were worn loose and the shirt tail was worn out, not tucked in. However, the jungle fatigue shirt sleeves were rolled up high, which meant there were nice biceps and forearms everywhere. And some guys didn't fully button their fatigue shirts. So even without tight pants, <clears throat> there was plenty of scenery for connoisseurs of military bearing, of which there were a fair number in Saigon at that time. Another bit of slang that I heard for the first time back then was 9010, okay? So the joke was that a lot of the guys who flirted with other guys were really 90% straight and maybe 10% mm, not so straight, 90 tens. The question was, how likely was it that a 90 10 would actually be available for gay sex? The answers were, <laughs> it depended probably not that often, and not never. Yeah, gender fluidity among warriors, it goes back a long way. Alexander the Great, the Samurai, Frederick the Great. And you can bet that the world history course in my high school covered none of that. But now, thanks to your generation and mine, that fact of life and quite a few others are a lot more out in the open now. It brings to mind one of my favorite old Harry Truman quips. The only thing new in the world is the history that you do not know. <laughs> <laughs>